electric universe, indeed the entire mathematical establishment, believes that light is an electromagnetic wave. The mathematicians routinely illustrate their abstract wave as a bunch of mutually perpendicular lines. The mathematical wave consists of an electric field and a magnetic field. In this scheme of things, wavelength is defined as the horizontal distance between peaks and amplitude as the vertical distance between peaks. The electromagnetic wave of the religion of mathematical physics travels one way, in a single direction, and for never explained reasons, oscillates around an axis. Frequency is defined as the number of peaks per second. Physics, however, is first and foremost the study of objects. We cannot do physics without objects. What would there be to study? What would there be to see? What experiment can you run without an object? Even thought experiments are done with images. Unfortunately for our misguided mathematicians, there is no object in physics called a wave. Wave is not what something is, but what something does. The wave of mathematics is not a noun, but a verb. Likewise, there is no object in physics known as a field. The word field is also a concept, and as such, it doesn't belong in physics as a physical object. If light interacts with matter, we have no choice but to replace the abstract wave of mathematics with a physical entity. The trick is to break the code, to discover the correct configuration of the entity that underlies the phenomena we call light. It is thus that we replace the mathematical wave with a physical rope-like mediator. The wave is alleged to consist of a magnetic field and an electric field. The physical electromagnetic rope is comprised instead of a magnetic thread and an electric thread. The wavelength of mathematics now becomes the length of a link, and the rope's amplitude is given by the height of the threads. The anti-parallel threads of a taut rope have no choice but to coil around an imaginary axis. Whereas mathematical waves travel in a single direction, torsion along the rope travels in both directions simultaneously. The rope and the wave come to a head when trying to explain physical phenomena. For instance, the mathematical establishment has no idea what physically restrains light to a constant speed as specified by its very own wave equation. Why does frequency go up when the wavelength goes down and vice versa? Here we have six waves, each one centimeter long, passing a given point in one second. What physical reason is there for the frequency to drop to three waves per second when wavelength increases to two centimeters? What physically prevents both the wavelength and the frequency from increasing so that light can travel faster? Under the rope model of light, the longer you make the links, the fewer links you can fit in any given length of rope. The rope model justifies why frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional and why light is a constant. Maxwell's equation is the equation of a rope. The mathematicians also have no clue why the speed of light is independent of the speed of its source. The reason so many mathematicians today still search for speeds faster than light is that they see no reason why the two speeds shouldn't be added. Logic would suggest that the light is traveling at the speed of light from the torch, but then I need to add on the 140 miles an hour that the train is going. Under the rope model, when an atom is approaching another one, it reels in the electromagnetic threads which now form part of its body. An atom slides along any given rope like a bead on an abacus. This is how Mother Nature secretly does this magic trick. Under the rope model of light, there is no mystery as to why the speed of light is independent of the speed of the source. To make matters bleaker for the quantum wave, an atom allegedly manufactures light when the electron bead quantum jumps. 
this signal, energy, radiation, or whatever, travels off to nowhere and comes from nowhere. A pertinent question then is whether a wave manufactured in an atom of the Andromeda galaxy travels like a sailboat through the cosmic ocean all the way to Earth, or extends from there all the way to here. Where does the mathematical wave begin? Where does it end? Under the rope model, an atom in the Andromeda galaxy is permanently bound to any atom comprising the solar system. The electromagnetic rope interconnects any two atoms in the universe. Torsion has no chance of getting lost irrespective of where an atom moves. Whereas quantum mechanics proposes that atoms are discrete independent entities, the rope hypothesis proposes that all atoms in the universe are interconnected. What is perplexing is that there are people out there who still don't understand the difference between an object and a concept. As far as all these neophytes are concerned, all we did was assign a new name to the infamous field of mathematics. So let's clarify the difference. Field is a concept. A thread is a physical object. A thread physically binds two atoms to each other. A concept such as field is like the concepts love and information. Concepts cannot pull two atoms together or perform any operations in the physical world. Therefore, it is ludicrous for the mathematicians to claim at this late stage in the game that light is a wave which is comprised of two fields. Neither wave nor field has a place in physics. In the religion of mathematical physics, an electron orbits the nucleus. The mathematicians have re-engineered this atom over the years and today claim that the electron is really a fuzzy cloud that envelopes the nucleus. So this is a very good picture of a hydrogen atom with an electron in the lowest energy state. The electron occupies a cloud instead of an orbit. But this is a circular argument because the mathematicians allege that this cloud is a region where we can find an electron. Now what's a cloud? A cloud is an area where the, there's the most probability of finding an electron. Imagine that we take a picture of this electron every second for a day, a week, or month. We see that all these pictures laid on top of one another begin to form an electron cloud around the nucleus. Remember, all these hypothetical pictures or data points represent where the electron has been over time. So is the electron a bead that orbits the nucleus, a cloud that envelopes the nucleus, or is a cloud a region around the nucleus where we can find the electron? What cloud of electrons can a hydrogen atom have if it has a single electron? Under the rope hypothesis, the atom finally receives a rational physical interpretation. The electric and magnetic threads fork at the boundary of an atom. The electric thread continues straight to the center of the atom and out the other end. The magnetic thread, meanwhile, curves around and forms the electron shell. The electric threads from every atom in the universe converge upon a given atom, forming an urchin-like star at its center. Meanwhile, the magnetic threads weave the electron shell that encapsulates the proton. Thus, the atom is not comprised simultaneously of an orbiting bead, which is actually a cloud, which is actually a region where we can find the electron bead. The atom is an urchin-like star encapsulated within a shell, the surface of which resembles a ball of yarn. When the atom contracts, it releases links of rope radially. And when the atom expands, it draws in thread to make up for the larger atom. This so-called quantum jump torques the rope. The atom is a little heart pumping torsion waves called light to every atom in the universe. Mm -hmm.